Contrast is like a quite a wide principle and you can contrast in many different ways, but the main ways he uses contrast is contrast of speed and contrast of size. Outside of that, he uses a lot of uh, lines. He uses directions. Some things are going very fast, some things are going very slow, and he'll always try to create a contrast between those two things by making the fast things extremely fast, the slow things extremely slow. Similarly, he will, if he wants something to look big and grand, he will, by comparison, make, say, the human in the frame very, very, very small. Here are some distinct features that you might find in one of Nakamura's pieces. Fight scenes, impact frames, smoke effects, sparks, sword blurs, motion blurs, kung fu, wushu, choreography, camera shake, intricate camera movement, for example, punching in and out for impact, and utapon cubes and other debris effects. If you're a subscriber of mine, you've probably uh, already heard me say this, but for the people who don't know, uh, I recently created an online animation course where we go through exactly how to create one of these debris effects for yourself uh, so you learn step by step. We also have master studies and reference studies. We sort of reverse engineer uh, some of the techniques that the masters do when it comes to creating these debris effects. And for this video, the first 20 people to get the course will have a massive discount. So the link will be in the description. So go over to the link, see if you're one of the early people to get this course. If you're interested in learning anime debris effects, check out the course. Right, that's my pitch over with. Now back to the video. This shot is all about his uh, attention to detail, his observation and his discipline and control. So he has as well as doing these off the wall crazy shots, he also has a lot of control over what he makes. He can actually control things very acutely. What a lot of people who are new coming into animation don't realize is that the really wacky energetic stuff is not necessarily the hardest stuff to, to make. Uh, sometimes the hardest thing to make is just controlling a slow quiet moment with subtlety. This isn't the best example of subtlety and restraint. For that, I'd probably look into someone like uh, Isao Takahata. But it does demonstrate that he is capable of doing that as well. So we just have a look at this shot here. So it's, uh, it's just a shot, a very focused shot of a lighter. This faint outline of this lighter. Okay, and then we have the actual, the ignition of it, and he's chosen to use one of his staples, which is impact frames. And he's used them very well here, where it's just as he flicks it down, we get these really beautiful shots with this. Um, this is the kind of crazy turquoise color that comes off of a, like a gas ignition. And then we've got the, all these lovely, rough lines which I always like to see in animation. I don't like things to be clean 100% of the time. I think rough lines can be used uh, to amazing effects, especially in parts like this. So he's obviously really paid attention to how the fire in a uh, lighter, how it behaves as it's igniting. I wouldn't be surprised if he looked at like high high frame rate footage of a lighter or if he recorded it himself as reference. The camera looks like it's just very, very subtly tracking in closer to the hand. As you can see this, this uh, finger just gets just slightly bigger. It's just grows slightly and that to me it looks like the camera's moving forward just very, very slightly. Um, things like the reflection, the animated reflection just on the top bit of the lighter and how that actually moves and it moves accurately, it's incredible. It really is. The flame itself is so nice. It looks really accurate to real life, but it's also got these, it's also got these, these little bits, these little uh, 
flares like that. I think that is actually something that lighters do emit with the sort of uh, the kerosene that's in them. It does cause those little tiny sparks. And then you've got this uh, very high contrast, of course, because you've got a singular light source, quite a strong singular light source. So you've got these very contrasting blocks of shadow. Areas of light actually change from frame to frame in intensity. If you look at like this patch here, for example, it actually changes in intensity. It flickers with the, the flickering light source. It's amazing. Um, very, very slight depth of field effect between the foreground and background just to separate this from the background. Exquisite uh, amounts of care in the detail of this shot. Like, it's very, very slow, but he's actually taken the time to just have that very subtle movement, not only in the shadows, but in the whole thing. With the, the hand moves up a little bit and towards us. Of course, the contrast in speed, you've got this quite quick uh, rush of the, the flame propelled out by this uh, kerosene gas or whatever it is. I've never seen a better lighter animation. <laughs> Notable scenes which are good to study. I recommend combing through these with frame by frame. Overman King Gainer episode 14, Concrete Revolution episode 3, Sword of the Stranger, the final fight in that film. Blood Blockade Battlefront Episode 1, a lot of that I cover here. Space Dandy Episode 17 and Episode 22 and 26 and Episode 13. He has done some amazing work in all of these episodes. And Darker the Black Gaiden Episode 4, that's one of my favourite scenes of his. Great poses, great use of debris, uh, very inventive choreography. So that one I would definitely recommend checking out. He has also made excellent contributions to My Hero Academia, Mob Psycho 100 and One Punch Man. So this one I just call pure genius, but really it's like all of the principles we've talked about so far brought into this scene and then more innovation on top of that. So Let's just have a look at some of it. I'll play it for you once and then we'll and then we'll have a look through each of the compositions. Every part of this is just really cool. We've got this kind of effect and this is like I haven't seen this. I just haven't seen it in anything else. This kind of material with these properties where it's, it looks like it's almost been rewound so that it's being pulled off. Really cool effect with this kind of sludge like material. It's been splattered all about the place and then it's being just like torn off in this direction. Stuff in the foreground like wipes across, which is a nice transition for the next scene. And then it continues on into uh, the next shot and oh my god this shot is uh this is a piece of art this, this uh, character is the main character of the show i think he's running away from this monster so he <laughs> it's another one of those experimental uh subjective compositions uh so much to unpack here so we've got the character who's literally like he's in front of him the urgency is really cool in this shot he's in a slow motion run but he's literally on top of this character. They're, they're literally like occupying the same uh, space. So the proximity, whatever I called it, proximity tension is at 100%. There's no distance in the frame between the two characters. So cool. And then we've got this experimental effects going on in the background, which looks, it's this sludge turning into like these beams which are forming the character and it's again it looks a little bit like it's played in reverse so maybe if I reversed it here it would look a like maybe he actually animated it in reverse like he animated it decomposing like that and then he rewound it maybe it kind of has that effect of it but in any case it's like it's forming this character but not only that, the monster kind of thing isn't even stationary as he's being formed. He's writhing about in this very odd 
very unique way which I've never really seen before. It looks very unnatural, it's scary, it's, it's uncanny how he's writhing about in this weird way as he's being formed back together. Um, we're able to actually see like the cross section of the forms themselves in these areas here and we're able to see it's literally like he's got such a good knowledge of the the sculpted form of the body that we're seeing a cross section of him being formed i've seen things like um uh, mri scans before where they kind of go through cross sections there's also a few stop motion videos i've seen where they literally chop away at things and then they play it full speed so you're able to see uh, a stop motion video of them going through an object things like that i guess maybe it's inspired by that it's used this uh red lud like effect around that's really nice for battling the problem of um the fact that it's it's facing us so silhouetted it, the silhouette doesn't look very good so a way he's combated that is to use this red outline of the blood so that we do actually see uh, the cross section clearly. Uh, the anatomy here is really good, really on point. Crazy writhing effect. I can't tell you how he made that slow, gradual writhing, bubbling, flexing look. I have no idea. Maybe he just did a few different poses, all slightly different proportions with the musculature and then he slowly in between between them I don't know but your, your guess is as good as mine and then in front we've got this uh, character running really nice slow motion run I should add um, he's kind of illuminated uh, we've got this contrast between the brightness of this uh, background character and that's kind of that's contrasted by the dark silhouette of this character so you can see them both very clearly and then we've got this really nice abstract hue, like this kind of smoke texture that's... And then it reveals these kind of textures here, which are really nice, uh, just really nice added detail, added texture to the whole thing. This is like a work of art here, it really is, even in just a still image. This I was actually going to use as my first example of the contrast of speed. So here you see the same kind of... Uh, uh, techniques repeated so you've got a slow motion run and the slow motion run he's made it really nice so that the character's stumbling a little bit and doing this sort of windmill motion with the hands or he does in it yeah in a moment that's really nice uh, so he's kind of it's like a stumbled run and then he's running against these uh, streaks of slime or whatever they are this bright green everything else in the scene is desaturated to the point where there's very little color variation and then that makes the color of the green this luminous green stand out so much so uh, more contrast contrast in in the saturation now again like we said with this subjective nature it's not laid out like that if if we actually look like the scene it's not but he's created it like that and then here we see layered effect where it's on either side of him so it looks like he's either dodging it or just running through it he kind of does what he wants he's got a very uh good sense of like what would make a very beautiful striking image and like an experience for the viewer he's got a very good sense of that and then he just sort of makes it and then he makes it look really good with his craft i love this run i can't get across how much I love this slow motion run and then he's running against these uh, these particles it's fantastic this shot here but in particular is an, it's a work of art he's really inspiring like just showing how he pushes the boundaries of his craft, has a certain disregard for the rules of his craft. I think he'll actually assess what rules he could break to achieve his goals, to creatively make something that looks amazing and is an amazing experience to watch. So uh, that I find very inspiring. I don't actually want to 
be the next Nakamura. I want to be my own artist. Uh, I want to be Howard Wimsurst. And I recommend that if you're watching this, I see a lot of copycats. So if, uh, if you're watching this and you like Nakamura, that's great. Enjoy his stuff, be inspired by it, but try and go off in your own direction with things. That's my recommendation. But we should celebrate this guy. Especially if you like fighting and combat and action scenes. This guy is your man. He's like your uh, messiah. <laughs> so what can you learn from Nakamura? Within his work, there is always a conscious focus on something visually appealing and sometimes something which is visually interesting. This is really important that he has this focus in his work and I recommend that whatever scene you're uh, you're creating don't just make the scene on autopilot really think about what you're trying to emphasize with it and then think of the tools at your disposal that you have that you can use to draw emphasis to create contrast often emphasis is created by contrasting things Start your animation with a key idea behind the movement. Maybe you want to draw attention to something in particular, like this, the speed of something or the complexity of the moves. If it's the swords, maybe the, the speed at which the swords are moving. Maybe you want to draw attention to the scale of a building or the weird properties of a material. Now find reference that you can study that will help you to bring out that idea. And then remember that you can use contrast to attract the audience's attention, to make them realize the same kind of idea that you have. Subscribe if you'd like to regularly see videos like these. Check out my Patreon if you'd like to support the making of these videos. And of course, remember to check out the Sakuga Debris course in the description. See you in the next video. Goodbye.